We spotlight live music once a month with Rogue Sounds. Music critic Je- uh, Josh Gross and host Jeff Riley are here to discuss what's coming up this month. Josh Gross, thanks for joining us once again. Always good to have you. Well, always good to be had. So it's not exactly spring yet, but it does seem like things are heating up just a little bit maybe on the wait, uh, on the music wait. trail. Blizzards aren't normally part of spring? <laughs> well, it depends. I'm from Connecticut. So, yes, we've had snow as late as May 9th, but let's not go there. <laughs> Well, it's yeah, it's keto, but it's it's turning. We're getting into the we're getting into the time when people scheduled things, thinking it wasn't going to be a blizzard. So you know, tour tour tours back on. All right, all right. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, see if we can get the snows of uh, of uh, late February, early March behind us, and uh, start talking about the likes of. Uh, we'll start with the Robert Winia trio. Am I pronouncing that correctly? I believe it's pronounced Winia, but I mean it's kind of pronounced potato or potato. You know, I, I'm going to go with Winia. Uh, Robert Winnie at Trio, yeah, this, uh, Robert Winnie used to front a kind of semi-legendary uh, Oregon band called Floater, sort of psychedelic metal band uh, that was just very, ins- I think, very instrumental to, like, anyone who kind of grew up in the 90s. And uh, they're still around doing stuff. Uh, Floater, you know, plays shows, you know, a couple times a year and, uh, you know, does these big, you know, epic things. But he has a sort of, you know, solo project on his own doing something very, very different. And I tell you, I really dig it. Uh, this we're gonna hear a song from his sort of like solo, not art metal, you know, work, and I think it's pretty cool. I am just like an acrobat tumbling down from the wire. But I'm fragile, but happily broken for what I desire. All I see is I sing. You says Robert Winnie, and uh, I'll tell you something. I, uh, I it, you make it difficult on me, which is a nice, uh, nice uh, thing, difficulty to have in the sense that uh, some of the songs that you use for examples of the groups just are they're so detailed. They have so much stuff going on, and and uh, multiple choruses and verses that don't sound at all like each other. And it's like you know, how do we pluck just a little segment out of here for for just a couple of minutes of airtime? You know, interestingly enough, that is where I think the through line with this particular song is, is that um, Floater, uh, going back to, you know, uh, Robert Winnie's earlier material, which I originally knew him from, was really known for these very sort of cinematic, epic uh, songs that, you know, would go on for like, you know, seven minutes and sort of like go in a lot of different directions and not necessarily just go like, oh, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, but, you know, like sort of have sprawling cinematic arrangements that just like painted you a picture. And though the sound of what he's doing here with the Robert Winnie Trio is obviously very, very different, I think some of that sort of like structure and that sort of like concept of like uh, having a sort of sweeping cinematic like uh, take has really endured. And I'm really enjoying the way he put it to sort of um, folk and alt country and, you know, really get some of those like brings out some of those cool minor key harmonies. You know, when you mention song structure, it reminds me that, that, that the ones that catch your attention are the ones that kind of break the rules. And I was, I, it was the best example I can think of off the top of my head is is Mr. Jones and Me. What is that, The Counting Crows? That is The I Counting Crows. I could not tell you what the A, B, A, B, C, whatever, how that song structure works. I don't even think he, Adam Duritz, the guy who wrote it, could tell you. I think it's just, I think he freestyled it. I think there's four chords and you just went in and every so often I was like, oh, right, it's about Mr. Jones. And I went back to that. <laughs> Just ever so often say Mr. Jones and me, and we're all set. Yeah, yeah, why not? It, it, it ain't broke. Don't, don't. That's it. right. Josh Gross with us for uh, for Rogue Sounds on the Jefferson Exchange. Uh, up next is uh, Coffin Cats. Let's go straight into the song, and we can talk yeah. about the group afterward.
This is a reminder, once again, not, not to think uh, strictly in terms of genre, because there's just so much going on in that song. Uh, you know, interestingly, these guys are a little more genre than you think. It's just uh, probably been another genre you, I expect you to have heard of it. Um, these guys are one of the foremost groups within a genre called Psychobilly, which is a sort of uh, uh, a kind of a style that sits at the intersection of like rockabilly, like sort of Stray Cats, Gene mm-hmm. Vincent kind of stuff, and a lot of themes um, from like sort of classic 1950s like horror movies that sort of you know like get mashed up in like a sort of cultural sense, and oftentimes gives it a little bit more of a punk edge. Um, they're from Detroit. Um, I think this may actually be their first time in coming through the Southern Oregon region, but they're a semi-legendary band. I mean, I think a lot of their touring actually happens in Europe because there's a really big rockabilly scene and psychobilly scene, uh, especially in Scandinavia. Um, but these guys are like kind of a big deal. and It's pretty cool that they're going to come to Medford. It's like, it's a pretty awesome show. You know, once you use the term psychobilly, went, oh, okay, sure, rockabilly roots, and that explains like the walk down on the bass going, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. 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 And what you usually find with psychobilly band is it's kind of built around like, um, you know, like a very charismatic upright bass player, who oftentimes has like a coffin upright bass or something like that. <laughs> and, you know, like, and really like kind of leans in and like makes a whole like stick out of it where it's a, it's a little cartoonish, but it's cartoonish in a way that really like presents well on stage and really like, you know, is very additive, I think. And, uh, you know, if if you've never seen like someone really going at an upright bass, like in a really like enthusiastic band, it's something to see because it's a very, like, it's a very percussive instrument. You, the way you, there's a lot of physicality in how it's played and it really just has an incredible stage presence. And I think the, where you can see some of that, the most of that is in, you know, uh, psychobilly groups. And one of the fun things is leaning all the way in. Yeah. And one of the fun things with the stand up bass is you can also spin it around. And then there's that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's really like, I, I go for the, the notes, you yeah. just spin it around. The theatrics always work with me. So that is yeah. uh, uh, Coffin Cats will be at uh, Johnny B's in Medford with uh, Crazy on the Brains on uh, Tuesday, <laughs> March 21st. I don't know if we mentioned Robert Winnie at Trio, March 25th at the Sunny Side in Roseburg. And then we move ahead on this edition of Rogue Sounds 2. It looks like, <laughs> I was thinking scientific uh, notation, so Hooverii, but no, it's... it's uh, yeah, no, I had the same thing. It's actually pronounced Hoover 3, and mm-hmm. I think they may have dug themselves a hole by naming the band that, but it's just Hoover with three eyes, and it's pronounced uh, Hoover 3. Like the One Eaters? The yeah, one well, yeah, the One Eaters, exactly. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so let, let's, uh, let's hear some uh, Hoover 3 coming to uh, the dip in Reading, Wednesday, March 29th. Sounds with Josh Gross. That's uh, that's another full sound band. Yeah. So the the background on these guys is it started as many modern projects do as a recording project by a guy named Bert Hoover, and then I you know started adding people to it, hence the Hoover Three. Um, and then you know eventually kind of worked its way up to being a six piece. But uh, you know, and it started with a lot more sort of early like sort of drum machines and synthesizers and stuff. But when you sort of start off in that direction, you kind of like lean into a lot of these ideas of sort of like hypnotic sort of like rhythms where there's a lot of things on a loop that you get lost in, you know, that kind of like psychedelic rock vibe. And as what happened with, you know, many groups, uh, you know, in recent history, they had a lot of time at home to sort of like go back to the drawing board and sort of like reinvent everything because they were all, everyone was stuck at home for, you know, 2020 and 2021. And, you know, they sort of came out with this, uh, this whole new sound. And, you know, this just sort of like big sprawling and it's a six piece band and, you know, they're doing a lot of touring in Europe. And it's just really cool, like kind of hypnotic sound that you kind of get lost in the groove of, you know, which is uh, that's that kind of vibe is having a moment right now. And these guys are really doing a great job with it. So are you saying a fair number of bands did that sort of thing where they kind of cocooned during the uh, during the, the pandemic and, and came out? Different? Well, you kind of had to. I mean, <laughs> yeah. no one was really going out playing gigs. So it was, everyone's like, all right, I guess we'll pass the time by like cooking up some new songs, new recording project. Now's the time to 
break out the weird, you know, synthesizer wires and try to make up something new just to, you know, keep from going crazy. So everyone was stuck at home for a couple of years and, you know, needed to, so it provided a lot of fertile ground for, you know, sort of taking new directions or like rebooting projects that you've been a part of. All right. Give them a lot of time to practice, too. Have you noticed the instrumentation a little better uh, <laughs> since the pandemic? Well, the hard thing was you can't practice if you can't be around everyone. You right. know? That, so, so everyone, it was kind of the golden age of the solo project because everyone, you know, at this point, every, most musicians had access to recording soft equipment in a way that they, people hadn't had before. And they were given the, the biggest thing, which is just the gift of time because usually it's like the hardest thing is like you, it's really hard to clear your schedule to just say, I'm going to focus on you know, working on my recording project for, you know, this six months because usually you have to go to work or you have to, you know, leave the house. And in this case, that that wasn't allowed. So, Josh Gross with Rogue Sounds here on the Jefferson Exchange. Our uh, final band of the four presenting this month is uh, is Hippie Death Cult coming to yes. the dip in Reading on Friday, March 24th. You can explain the yes after we listen. <laughs> Once we got the you know the, the opening metal chords and and, uh, and the you're gonna die, I just sort of assume this is metal, but it is called the hippie death cult and tree hugger. Uh, yeah, I mean here's the thing: I don't even hear the, I don't like it's got a lot of big like sludgy heavy guitars, but I hear the blues. Mm-hmm. To me, it's it's just there's a sort of like a basic sort of blues stanza, blues riff, just kind of like you know I got a sad story to tell, and here's like a little like guitar loop that's gonna. You know, it's just they crank that all the way up in the classic style of, you know, Black Sabbath, which, you know, Black Sabbath at the time, like, was basically sort of credited with inventing heavy metal, but they really just thought they were a blues band. You know, they just happened to have some a pretty dark, specific, <laughs> and, you know, oddly specific take on it. But they were really just pulling from the same sort of blues tradition of just, you know, riffs and sad stories to tell. Is that an ongoing debate, though, about who the, the source of heavy metal was? I mean, I still remember Pete Townsend from The Who and his comment about uh, how what they did led to the gross, disgusting spectacle that was Led Zeppelin. I, I, Pete Townsend says a lot of things. Yes, what he are, does. What are you going to do? As I understand it, the term heavy metal came from a journalist who said that he was describing Jimi Hendrix, and he said that Jimi Hendrix's music sounded like heavy metal falling from the sky. Um, and I mean, like, who exactly invented anything, you know, is kind of like, it's pretty hard to pin down because everything is sort of built on everything and everything is influenced by everything. But I mean, I think modern, as we understand modern heavy metal, it lar- its so- roots are largely come from Black Sabbath. But at the same time, there were bands in Japan that predate Black Sabbath that were doing the exact same thing that most people in America don't know about. So... It's hard to really, really say, but I think, you know, the sort of foundational influence where most people would sort of credit their understanding, it largely comes from Black Sabbath. But again, Black Sabbath was largely just kind of playing a, a version of the blues that was just a, a little a little more intense. Well, I, I always get a great history lesson from you. It's just wonderful to spend time with you. Let me give the, the list again for this month. Uh, the Robert Winnie Trio on Saturday, March 25th at Sunnyside in Roseburg. Uh, Coffin Cats with uh, Crazy and the Brains at Johnny B's in Medford, Tuesday, March 21st. Hoover 3, March 29th, a Wednesday at the Dip in Reading. And Hippie Death Cult, uh, Friday, March 24th, also at the Dip in Reading, all presented by Josh Gross in Rogue Sounds. Josh, as always, thank you. Thank you for having me, Jeffrey. It's always a pleasure.